All right, if you would please grab a King James Bible and turn to the book of Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, uh, chapter 24. And today's going to be a really short video, but a really interesting video if you enjoy prophecy. Um, the name of today's video is just going to be simple. Prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. And let's go take a look what Jesus has to say about himself regarding prophecy in the Old Testament. So in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44, this is Jesus speaking right here. It says, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So he's saying all these things that I did while I was here. And by the way, some things that he's going to do when he returns, they are written in the books of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms. So basically the entire Old Testament is speaking about Jesus. The prophecies are um, profoundly about Jesus. And really, there's only one way for a, for a man or a woman to come to the understanding of these prophecies. The Bible actually gives us the answer for that. It says that the natural man in his lost state, so somebody who's not saved by putting their faith in Christ and what he did on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection for your sins, it, the Bible calls that man a natural man. And it says he cannot discern God's word. And before we even go into a prophecy that I want to show you guys that's really interesting, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 12 through 14. And we're going to see here something that Paul had to say that's very interesting. And uh, it's one reason why some people just cannot seem to grasp the Bible and grasp the prophecies in it, because they're not saved. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. So let's take a look. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And verse 14, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So what the Apostle Paul here is saying that is that if you want to truly understand Bible prophecy and just have an understanding of the Bible in general, you have to be saved, first of all. You have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And the natural man who thinks of this stuff as foolish, is not a saved man. He never put his faith in Christ. And he thinks of this stuff as foolishness. He does not have the spirit of God within him. So if you want to understand prophecy, step number one is you have to be saved. And in order to get saved, you have to put your, your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and that he did that for your sins. And putting also a strong emphasis on the resurrection of Christ because that proves who he is the Son of God, also known as God made manifest in the flesh. So if he didn't resurrect, then none of that would even really matter. But it's that death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. If you believe that he did that for your sins, you are forgiven completely and saved. Now you are a spiritual man. You're no longer the natural man. So now you'll be able to have that understanding as long as you pray to God and ask him for wisdom of his word, he will give it to you freely and liberally, the Bible says. So what I want to go over is a really cool, cool prophecy in the book of Psalms here in chapter 89, verses 8 and 9, okay? So Psalm 89, verse 8 and 9. Let's read this really quick. And we're going to come back to it. Uh, Psalm 89, verse 8 and 9, it says, O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Remember that right there, especially verse 9 right there. The raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Now we have a cross-reference 
in the New Testament that proves that this is actually a prophecy regarding Jesus Christ during his three and a half year ministry while he was on earth 2,000 years ago. And that's in Mark chapter 4. So let's go there. Mark, 30, Mark 4 verses 35 through 41. We're going to see where that is a prophecy and that is fulfilled right here. So Mark 4 starting in verse 35. Mark 4 in verse 35. And the context here is he just got done speaking in parables to a whole group of people. And now he's leaving and he's going to the other side of the sea in a boat. So let's see here in verse 35. It says, and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side of the sea. So he's saying, or he said unto the other side, but that's of the sea is what he's referencing. And 36, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, speaking of Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Before we continue, remember in verse 9 of Psalm 89, it said that he stillest the waves. It says, thou, The waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Right here, we see that the the waves are arising. Everything is going crazy in this little tiny ship. He's asleep in the back. And his disciples came up to him and said, wake up. Uh, do you not care that we're drowning? And he, he woke up and he said, peace be still. And let's continue. And it says, and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Wow. Right there. He, he fulfilled the prophecy in verse 8 and 9 of Psalm 89. And let's continue here. It says, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, I'll tell you what manner of man he is. He is not just a regular man. He is God manifest in the flesh, the Son of God, who came to this earth to save people of their sins by dying for them. And he fulfilled that prophecy in verse 8 and 9 of Psalm 89. And we're going to read that one more time just so you can so you can get a really good look at it and so you can understand this is Jesus Christ in the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms, which by the way, the book of Psalms has a lot of prophecy regarding Jesus Christ's first coming, not just his second coming, but a lot regarding his first coming, especially Psalm 22 which prophesies his crucifixion. So Let's read that one more time. Psalm 89, verse 9, actually, right here. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, arise, thou stillest them. Well, he did that on that little boat, fulfilled that prophecy. And just as he said in Luke 24, the book of Psalms is talking about him. All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you.